Yeah, man, I said it already in the previous few days, but there are a lot of trades that happened in the past few years that I feel are pretty interesting to revisit in the year 2022. We're going back over into September of 2020 and talking about a previous Montreal Canadiens and St. Louis Blues trade that I think has kind of gone under the radar as one of the more underrated trades the Montreal Canadiens have made during the latter years of the Bergevin era. Now, I know Bergevin went out there and made a ton of trades. Like, if you go over into his trade history list, you'll find an endless amount of minor deals, late-round picks getting swapped around for lower-tier players, just a lot of material here and there for Mark Bergevin trade discussion. And there are some big ones thrown in there as well once in a while. But when it comes to this trade here made between the Blues and the Canadians, I really do think that there is so much added value that the Canadians have had just in general, when you acknowledge what happened, who got sent out, and what's been coming in. So, the trade we're talking about happened on September 2nd, 2020, as we said. The Montreal Canadiens sent away two draft picks that were not theirs. Firstly, it was the 2020 third round pick from the Washington Capitals, that in which the Canadians acquired from the Ilya Kovalchuk trade. And secondly, it was the 2020 seventh round pick acquired from the Chicago Blackhawks in the Andrew Shaw trade. So, if you kind of work your way up the trade tree a little bit, you kind of see that the Canadians got themselves Kovalchuk and they got themselves Shaw. They traded these guys away for some draft picks, and then they used these draft picks to send over to the St. Louis Blues in a trade for goaltender Jake Allen and a 2022 seventh round pick, which eventually was used by Montreal to select Miguel Tournier. Now, this Tournier pick is one that we talked about on the channel before, but I wanted to go over it again here, not just because the player is a really good one, I think, but because the draft pick for Montreal and actually the opportunity for them to select this player was not immediately given to them right away. The pick actually transferred to a few more teams before ending back in the hands of the Canadians. But when you go over what exactly it was Kovalchuk and Shaw ended up getting for the Habs, we all kind of acknowledge what these two players meant for the team. Andrew Shaw was some sort of a fan favorite. He wasn't the best guy in the world, but he wasn't the bad guy. He worked hard. He was a good bottom six talent, and a lot of Canadians fans just liked the guy because he played an honest game. For Ilya Kovalchuk, he was a star that came back to the NHL and who was having a little bit of trouble just finding a solidified role with the other teams that were giving him opportunities. So the Habs signed him, he played with Suzuki, he helped Suzuki really transition into becoming a mainstay NHL forward, and even though he was here for a short time, hey, he was here for a good time. And a lot of Canadians fans went out there and started cheering their heads off every time Kovalchuk touched the puck at the Bell Centre. The problem was, we all kind of know that Kovalchuk was a lot older, and the Canadians in this time frame were a younger team, so it's not really like Kovalchuk had a future in Montreal. He was just kind of here for the purpose of boosting his own stock so that he could probably get a better free agent contract elsewhere, and he got a third round pick for the Canadians in return. Now, these two picks, a third and a seventh, getting sent over for one Jake Allen, that in and of itself is a pretty good deal when you acknowledge what the Canadians have with Jake Allen at their disposal. He was already becoming the second tier guy in St. Louis because Jordan Binnington had taken over in the prior year, and he actually had some really good numbers before getting sent over to Montreal with a 9-2-7 save percentage in 24 games in the regular season, and a 9-3-5 save percentage in 5 games, and a 1-8-9 goals against in the postseason, the bubble of that year. He was good, and I remember as a Vancouver Canucks fan watching the St. Louis Blues and saying, yeah, this team is oddly enough a lot better with Allen and Nett versus when Jordan Bennington is in there. Montreal is getting themselves a legitimate backup to be the second-tier guy behind Carey Price, and I think today, after acknowledging everything the Canadians have been through, Carey Price's injury, his rehab, his whatever-whatever, Montembeau coming in here, Primo not being good enough, and Jake Allen coming in here as the de facto starter in a Carey Price-less Montreal Canadian squad— you really did start to see that Allen is just a gamer, and he's a pretty good goaltender that was really struggling because the Canadians in front of him did not do any favors to help this guy out in net. He had a 9.05 save percentage and a 3.30 goals against average this previous season, and there's going to be no Canadians fan going out there saying that, yeah, no, it's all his fault. Like, he had nine wins on the year, and two of them were shutouts. Jake Allen is doing his best, and he's a very good goaltender. He just kind of needs some help. 
He also got re-signed by the Canadians to a pretty good $2.875 million extension per year until the end of 2023. So at the moment, there is some stability here for the Canadians and the caliber of goaltending that they have at their disposal. Obviously, Montembeau, Primo, there's going to be a conversation about the other guys, but Allen, at the very least, is good enough. And the fact that they traded a third and a seventh away for him is, in and of itself, a great trade. But I did say there was a draft pick attached to that trade as well. Alongside of Jake Allen, the Habs took the seventh round pick from the Blues that year. The thing is, though, that seventh round pick didn't stick around with Montreal for the two years that it was available before it actually was used. It was traded, firstly, to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Eric Gustafson. The Flyers then sent that seventh round pick over to the Arizona Coyotes in the Shane Gostaspare Future Considerations deal, and then the Coyotes traded that pick back to Montreal for a 2021 Montreal seventh round pick, that in which the Habs did not feel the need to use. So the Montreal Canadiens pretty much swapped their own seventh to get this seventh round pick back from St. Louis via Arizona, Philadelphia, and themselves. And so it's kind of wild just seeing the track record of this entire seventh round pick from St. Louis, 216th overall. From St. Louis to Montreal to Philadelphia to Arizona, back to Montreal, only for the Canadians to select Miguel Tourny, a guy that I absolutely love as a defenseman prospect for this team. We already spoke at length about Lane Hudson, the Canadiens draft pick earlier in the 2022 draft that was a super high ceiling defenseman guy that could just be an absolute superstar of a player if everything goes right with his development. And for Miguel Tourney, if you had seen the video we made when he was drafted, I do feel like there's somewhat of a similar story here, although with a lot more obstacles in the way. Tourney is a guy who is 20 years old, so he's a double over Asia prospect in this year's NHL draft, 5'8", 170 as a right-handed D-man. So he's small, he's right-handed, he's defense, and he was taken in the seventh round by the Canadians with the St. Louis Blues pick. Last season in the QMJHL, the guy had 80 points and 30 goals in 65 games played. He was a stud. And if you take a look at the scouting report here on Elite Prospects, it's not every day that you see the Elite Prospects draft guide write a full-on scouting report about a double over age 5'8 defenseman. Tourney can skate down the wing, pass defenders, and release from the face-off circle, leveraging his speed and that long stick to elevate the puck above the shoulders of goalies. His constant activations make him hard to deal with on the ice. The opposition always has to be on the lookout for him, as a wrong move could lead to another one of his rushes. He is a puck-rushing, offensive-caliber defenseman. This is what Andy LaHue said about Tourney here. He is a mobile, offensively eager defenseman with high-end skills. The new has prospect accumulated 31 goals and 49 assists for 80 points in 65 games this season in the QMJHL, and you could see just his incredible even strength per 60 metric profile amongst QMJHL defenders. He is in the top percentile of everybody. He is 100% overall wins above replacement. He is near 100% in so many of these categories. Zone exits, carried exits, carried entries, zone entries, puck touches, dekes, goals, shots, 99 to 100% everywhere. I don't care if he's 5'8". I don't care if he's 20 years old. I don't care if he's a double overager. This is the seventh round. You go out there and you take guys that have potential, and Miguel Tourney has that. When it comes to the Canadians going out there and taking QMJHL guys that are overagers at the end of the draft, you'd seen this actually as a pretty prominent pattern with guys like Raphael Harvey Pinard. You had seen Xavier Simoneau the previous year, and now it's Tourney this year. And all you really need is for one of these guys, one of these players that just happens to be just so good at producing points in the QMJHL, to hit, to look like an absolute genius. If one of these three players, Harvey Pinard, Simono, Tourney, even all the other guys that we had talked about already, even if Elaine Hudson hits, all you need is one of these guys to hit and you look like an absolute genius. Big brain baller play right there by taking a guy that would eventually become an NHL player, let's say, at the very least, not even a superstar, just an NHL player. If you get a guy like that in the seventh round, you're winning. And so for the Canadians to take this player alongside of Jake Allen in a trade that ultimately saw them give up the scraps in the Kovalchuk and Shaw returns to get these assets in the first place, I think it's an absolute win. I see this as an absolute win. I'm turning green. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry, Cap. So talk to me in the comments about your thoughts about the St. Louis Blues, Montreal Canadiens, Jake Allen, Miguel Tournier trade. 
How good do you think Allen is going to be for the Canadians this season? How good do you think Tourney is going to be for, let's say, the Laval Rocket as soon as next season because the guy's 20 years old? I mean, it says here on Elite Prospects that he's going to play another season with Akadi Bathurst, but, I mean, he's 20, so, I mean, if he goes back and he's able to play, then fine. Let's see him go out there and score 40 goals on a year as a D-man. I would not be opposed to that. But talk in the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99. And, bye.